All right, welcome back YouTube to another champion concept video. Today we're gonna be going over a new champion reveal known as Amono the Banished One. If you guys like my champion concepts, like always, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way I can keep making these sort of videos for you guys. Let me know what you guys think, if there's any type of champions you would like to see me make. And yeah, we'll get right into the video. So with Amono, um, I created, I wanted to make a different sort of support. Um, if you look at the supports right now in season nine, you have you know you have casters, damage and healers. You have CC tanks, and you have one considered uh, support assassin carry and pike. That's really it. I wanted to look at something a little bit different and create sort of a fighter support champion. And when I say fighter, someone who is able to basically dual skirmish with whether it's the jungler or the support itself. So that's where Amono comes in. Like always, um, I'm starting to do this now where I'm putting my the lore for these champions in the description below. Uh, a link to my Reddit page that so we guys can view the lore and get a little backstory on Amono. But he is a, he is a support champion. He's going to be an AD... AP support champion, um, but he's going to be considered a fighter, and we'll kind of see why. Appearance-wise, I wanted to go more for a sort of a sumo wrestler sort of type of look. Uh, I know Gragas is, you know, a big boy, but we don't really have any other champions who fit that sort of mold. Um, I went with uh, the concept I would look for is something more so of a sumo wrestler type of build. L looks a little more, also it could be like Maui, you know, a little bit. I think it's really cool. Uh, look, you know, from Moana. If you guys have never seen Moana, you guys probably need to go watch that movie. But uh, kind of like Maui a little bit, or like a sumo wrestler sort of build. His backstory, though, I won't go into it too much in this video, but he has a lot of attitude and his life is very similar to that of a genie, too. So you can kind of keep all that stuff and just kind of boil it into one um, and making him a really cool fighting support. So we'll get into his passive which is known as Symbols of False uh, Virtue. When Amono auto-attacks enemy champions, Amono gains 5 to 15% movement speed around those target champions, which is about, I said 350 range, uh, which is a you know, the, the actual circumference around that enemy champion. That may go down a little bit, uh, maybe to 200, 250. I think 350 is a lot, but I just wanted to put like a max of how far I think it would be able to go. Uh, this decays over two seconds. Each auto-attack resets the movement speed similar to how Phage Works. If Amono is around at least one ally champion, Amono deals X percentage of missing HP damage to enemy champions. This scales with Amono's level. So he has a, um, if you remember Tom Kench, his old ultimate, I don't think his new ultimate does it. I haven't played him in a while. But his old ultimate used to give him on hit uh, HP damage when he auto attacked. That's kind of what Amono is able to do. So you can just see off of his passive alone, he wants to fight. So when you are picking... Amono, you would want to pick him into AD, or not AD, you want to take him into, you know, melee tank matchups when you're playing against Leonas, Nautilus, Tom Kench, Galio, Thresh even, Volibear, uh, or even, you know, when the jungler is someone like a Rek'Sai, a Jin Zhao, Elise, you know, someone who's going to be able to, you know, get up in your face and they're going to try to kill you, you're going to be able to auto attack them, you know, deal some damage, deal a good amount of damage, and also get a, some speed boosts there as well. With his actual first ability, it's called Callisto's Disc. Cooldown of 16 to 12, range of 650 with a curve radius of 60. So this is a skill shot. Amono claps his hands together, creating celestial energies to flow into his hands. This ability will charge up to 2 seconds, staying active for a total of 6. You can reactivate this to send a disc of energy towards target direction. Skill shot formulated similar to Diana Q. So just kind of think how Diana's Q worked, how it has like that curve on it. Dealing uh, magic damage to all enemies hit. Any targets hit with the tip end of the skill shot, I spelled the wrong, disregard that, uh, end of the skill shot will pulsate double magic damage. This has a Diana Q built into it just for zoning, for some farming, just for some, you know, backline poke. Also hitting enemies with the very tip of this ability will have sort of a Nico effect. It will pulsate, uh, instead of three times, it just pulsates again dealing more magic. Good way of just getting some damage down, keeping some targets at range, and this giving him an ability to where he can play against, you know, range support champions and be somewhat useful. His second ability has a lot in it. Uh, this is called Transcending Force. 
This has a cooldown of 25 to 18 with a range of 500 and then some extra ranges on there as well. Now this cooldown could go up. I feel like this could go up to more so the 30 mark and go down to about 20 uh, just because of what this ability can do. So I am cognizant of that. So if someone tells me that in the comments that this is a low cooldown, I, I, I understand. <laughs> so this is a skill shot. Omono channels and energy around him for one second, unleashing an unmovable force from his body. This ability will negate and alter every form of CC. So uh, if this ability is pointed in target direction, think Fiora W, how her repost works, uh, this ability will have a bonus effect. This ability is used to stop, can stop every form of CC, every form of CC. Does not matter if that CC makes the target unstoppable, like Malphite, like Vi, this will stop every form of CC. For I get into all the different forms. This will, the ability will still take place. Let's say for Malphite, if Malphite uses his R, instead of knocking up everybody in that area, if Amono blocks it, it will knock him up. It will do other things. He has, gets like bonus effects from it, okay? So the first one is, uh, talks about slows. So if Amono absorbs a slow, he has reduced damage, channels it for 1.5 seconds to then have an AOE speed boost, him personally, for X amount of seconds. So if someone slows him and he's, and he's able to block it, he will then gain a speed boost for whatever that amount is for a few seconds. For roots and stuns, he will absorb the CC, reduce damage, and slows the opposing person for X amount of seconds. If the target is inside the skill shot zone, they mimic the CC dealt to a mono. So if, for, for instance, they try to root him and he blocks it, it will send it back to them and also it, it will root them. Uh, if it stuns them, same thing. Uh, displacements use our like NAR ultimate, uh, Talia W, things of that nature. Uh, this negates the ability of the displacement. If the target is inside of the skill shot zone, they are pulled directly in front of a mono. If let's say Talia uses her W, her knock up or knock back. If a mono blocks it, if the target is standing within that skill shot range, Talia will be pulled directly in front of him instead of him being knocked up. So he has some very, he has an interesting pull built into his kit as well. Then you have knockups. So this uh, also reduces the damage and then negates knockup from affecting allies in that area. So let's say for instance, uh, Alistar jumps in, you know, headbutt pulverized combo. If you're able to block it, it will knock you up. You have reduced damage dealt to you. That's it. But it does block it from everybody else. Same thing with Vi. If Vi jumps in and she ults your you know, alt your AD carry. If you step in front of her and use this ability, you will actually soak that that knock up up and have, you know, damage reduction and then your AD carry would be fine. This is a very, very game changing ability. I think this could have a very, very good complication, you know, uh, you know, a complication for uh, being an LCS pick, being a world's pick, being just picked anywhere in competitive high elo uh, because you're able to late game block CZ. So like, let's say two targets have two forms of knockups and they both use them at the same time. And if you're able to block both of those and absorb all of that damage, that's huge. That is huge. That's why I think the cooldown could be a little bit higher. Maybe, actually, I don't know, late game, that actually seems pretty good. 18, you have 45% cooldown, still decent amount of time. You can't actually use this. So this is kind of the big portion of his kit, having this ability to basically just block any form of CC. As I said, you know, you have to point, you know, some of these abilities, you have to point the skill shot in, in that target direction. Um, so it's not always you're going to get the best part of this ability. But if you think, you know, someone like Tom Kench, who has a devour, he's able to basically devour his AD carry at any point in time during the bot lane. So it makes it very, very easy to kill them. It's just sort of the same concept of just being a very, very useful utility. The third ability is Orb Meditation. Cooldown of nine to five with ranges, as you can see there. Amono throws a celestial orb in target direction. These balls will last forever, basically, if you throw them there. Uh, while an orb is attached to an ally, however, if Amono and ally are damaging the same target, the ally gains lifesteal. Gains 10 to 30% lifesteal against enemy champions, 10 to 20% lifesteal against large monsters. Once a ball starts to heal an enemy, I mean, once a ball starts to heal an ally, however, this will slowly drain an X amount of mana from Amono's pool. So as I said, the ball can last forever, but once it actually starts healing the ally, it will start to drain his mana. So you're, you're gonna need a big, large, you know, pool of mana if you're gonna wanna, you know, use this in the late game. Uh, once you actually max this ability out, Amono can actually have two separate orbs going at the same time. So you can throw them on two different allies have them healing them, 
but it's just gonna continue to drain your mana pool. You can reactivate this ability to blink to, a, to an ally, which will remove the orb, but you actually are able to teleport blink to a target. Once you have two of them going, you have to basically activate it and then click on whatever target it is. But this is a very good movement ability uh, for you to you know get you know get around walls, um, maybe get out of out of a form of CC. Um, just gives you a very interesting playmaking potential, uh, but also just giving you a, a way to heal allies during a fight, um, giving you some extra utility there. And the last ability, this one is called Seraph's Safeguard. It's cooldown of 200 to 110, and you need to be within 250 range of that ally. Amono manifests a passable ring of energy surrounding himself and his targeted ally. While inside this range, Amono gains bonus resistances for each enemy near him. While inside the ring, Amono's basic attacks have a knockback effect, which will knock him back about 50 to 75 uh, range. If Amono knocks a target out of the arena or of the ring, Amono gains health regeneration while his target gains a bonus shield for about two or three seconds. If Amono or an ally or the ally leave the ring at any time, the arena will start to fade away. Uh, they have to be outside of the ring for about three seconds for this ability to cancel. This is basically, I'm going to sit on top of my AD carry, pop this and wait for people to come in and try to attack him and just knock them away from them you know, double this with the fact that, you know, his basic attacks have knockback, and then he also has a passive damage on it. Makes him a pretty, pretty difficult person to deal with. Um, you know, you have a Rengar jumping in, a Kha'Zix jumping in, a Katarina, a Kali, you're able to knock them back. You know, keeping, for one, keeping targets away from your to carry, and also the more targets that are around you, you're going to gain a bunch of extra bonus resistances to keep you safe. That way you can, you know, you know, keep a, you know, keep an orb on one of your allies, or, stop a form of CC or deal some damage. It just gives you a lot of, you know, a lot, like the, the big thing about this kit is just utility, utility, utility. With, when it comes to a champion who has, you know, his basic attacks do bonus HP damage, if you see somebody like Tom Kench, they become very, very broken if built with attack speed and dealing a bunch of damage like that. With a Mono, you know, he's a fighter, so you want to go in and actually deal damage and fight people, uh, but you do have a lot of utility to fall back on. That way you're able to, play around your team and using your abilities to you can single-handedly win win team fights i think <laughs> with this kit so yeah that is a mono um like always if you guys like my champion concepts like i said please like subscribe to the channel and hopefully you guys enjoy mono as much as i enjoyed making him and i will see you guys in the next video peace